Okay, so, we're in a group. We can do anything. What are we going to do? Um, um, uh, so... Well, I know. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. In ideas? Yeah. Maybe. No. I we can do this! We aimed to create an art installation in a public place. We took advantage of being in a group. Yeah. This is what we did. <laughs> We began by yarn bombing uni because we could. In a group, we had the opportunity to take a risk and we had the manpower to do something that we wouldn't be able to do on our own. Our intentions were to make people notice and make people smile. It was fun doing this and we got some good reactions. And some strange ones. But the responses made us question why we were doing it. Because uh, I was first and I was like, this is going to be all tumbled off. There's no way they're going to ever use this again. So they're going to just cut it somehow yeah. and discard. We use it again for somewhere else. Yeah. Like we'll take it apart and use it. To capture the spontaneity and movement of our yarn bombing, we had frames created to preserve the yarns. But the responses made us question why we were doing it. We chose to look at a current issue, which at the time was drought in the south of England. If it's raining where you are tonight, this may be hard to believe, but it looks like we're heading for a drought next summer. We tried this by placing our frames in various water-related locations, such as the Drain Canal. this afternoon after further heavy rain. But we were all really inspired by guerrilla advertising. I like the way they got their message across visually. We decided our next step would be to find a common interest. Something that we were all passionate about. This took a while. From our yarn bombing we became interested in why people do things in particular, unusual behaviour and social norms. We researched this a lot. We find it really interesting. Mental health stereotypically goes hand in hand with unusual behaviour. We started looking into dementia in more depth. Extreme Love, Louis Theroux gives us an intimate look into what it's like to live with mental illness. And before we talk to him, let's take a look at what happened when he became a carer for the day to dementia sufferer Nancy. Ready? Aim, fire. Exactly. You did it. Of course. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you keep kissing the ball. <laughs> well, well, I have nobody else here to kiss. I love Louis. <laughs> So I understand that you read to Miss Hamilton. Yeah, to help her remember. Because, you know, dementia is irreversible. It's degenerative. After a certain point, these victims don't come back. That's what you keep telling me. I hate this, Phil. We wanted people to take notice of the disease because it is so common. And we wanted to approach this sensitively. Facts about dementia. 800,000 people in the UK suffer from dementia. The number of people with dementia will double over the next 40 years. One in 1,400 people between 40 and 64 will get dementia. One in 100 people between 65 and 69 will get dementia. One in 25 people aged between 70 and 79 will suffer from dementia. One in three people will suffer dementia over 65. Two thirds of sufferers are women. One in six people over 80 will develop dementia. Visit alzheimers.org.uk We are not trying to force empathy or sympathy onto the viewer. Instead, create awareness and a starting point for individual reflection. After discussion, we realised in some way we all had a personal experience of someone with dementia. I remember one woman in a care home where I worked that walked up and down the corridor dressing and undressing. The same lady played Tom Jones on repeat constantly.
A lady that lived on my road used to wander around all the neighbours' gardens all day long. Sometimes she even walked into people's houses. Yeah, when I was a kid, I remember a woman walked into the front door and sat next to me on the sofa. My mum rang the local care home and it turns out she'd walked straight from there and into our house thinking it was her own house. A common symptom of dementia is misplacing objects. My auntie says she often finds hearing aids in the fridge. We wanted to use these true stories and get them across in a visual way. Learning from the experiments, we realised we needed a bigger and better installation that had more impact to raise even greater awareness of dementia. To do this, we took something even more out of context and put it in a public place. We wanted to create a talking point and display dementia facts visually. We got up really early to move the fridge to location before anybody was around. Really early. It was a struggle, but worth it in the end. It was exciting and ominously recording re reactions and responses. It looked like lots of people wanted to open the fridge, but they didn't. But eventually people got more interactive with it. Even approaching people for audio responses, we were surprised. Less people than I thought would walk up to it, I've walked up to it. To be honest, I don't think I would, just because I'd feel an idiot walking up to it. Like, I'd be, always want to know what was in it, but I'd never dare go and have a look. Why, though? Just because I'd feel silly, everybody looking at me, wanting to, like, walking up to the thing and open it. Some people were happy to look at the fridge and spend a lot of time with it, but they didn't have the time to talk to a person. Does this reflect people's attitudes towards people with dementia or mental health issues? Some responses made it all worthwhile. One in particular left on the fridge was... I work in a coffee shop and have seen so many customers go downhill with Alzheimer's and dementia in the last year. I love that you are raising awareness for something often overlooked and where older people are just seen as stupid and old when they actually have a disease. This had a big impact on all of us and I think it shows that we have achieved our goal. We've all really enjoyed this project and got a lot out of it. We wouldn't change any of it, even the blips because they have all added to the final outcome, and we're really proud of this project. If we had more time, we would have liked to have got a CRB check so we could go into the care homes as a group. This is so that we could have talked to more people and got even more first-hand experiences. Also, if we had more time, we would have applied for a licence so that we could present our installation in Speaker's Corner. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone It's not unusual to have fun with anyone But when I see you hanging about with anyone It's not unusual to see me cry